Seriously, why is nobody reporting on this aspect of the mission? Hello and welcome back. I have had a ton of questions about whether short radius artificial gravity would actually work. And I have some very exciting news because in just a few short months, we're gonna have a much better understanding of the answer to that question. Artificial gravity works by spinning a spacecraft. The objects inside the spacecraft want to travel in straight lines, but eventually they run into the floor and that floor applies a constant acceleration to them. That constant acceleration is a lot like the constant acceleration we feel here on Earth, and it should be able to help stave off some of the side effects of living in zero G. We studied this as best as we can on Earth using head down bed rest studies. This involves having a subject lay in a bed where their head is below their feet, for an extended period of time. This causes similar side effects to staying in space for the same amount of time. We then took these beds and stuck them in a centrifuge that applied 1G of acceleration back to the person's body. And, you know, doing that for 30 minutes a day appears to get rid of most of the side effects of living in zero G. The main side effect that was remaining was a loss of cardio, but that probably has more to do with sitting around and doing nothing for a long period of time rather than the zero G itself. A healthy dose of exercise would probably help fight that off as well. But there is one issue that's a little trickier to overcome, motion sickness. The faster you spin, the more motion sick people seem to get. And according to some estimates, this means we need excessively large artificial gravity spaceships that can be up to a kilometer long. Now, a lot of people mistakenly attribute the motion sickness to gravity gradient because your head is going to be closer to the center of rotation, it will feel less acceleration than your feet, which are farther from the center of rotation. This doesn't really make sense if you think about it too much, because wearing a weighted vest or carrying a heavy object would also put more load on your feet without affecting your inner ear, so that should make you motion sick according to the hypothesis, but of course that doesn't actually happen. Uh, and if it does happen to you, you should probably talk to your doctor. No, the actual cause for motion sickness is a bit more complex. It's something known as the cross-coupled illusion, and it takes place entirely in your ears. Inside of your ear, there is something called the vestibular system, which is made of three small circular tubes. These are all orthogonal to each other, or 90 degrees apart, like an XYZ coordinate grid. In fact, they work a lot like a three-axis gyroscope. Each of these tubes is responsible for detecting a different type of rotation. One detects pitch, one detects yaw, and the other detects roll. These little tubes can do this because they're full of fluid and tiny little hairs. When you tilt your head, you tilt the tube with it, but the fluid inside has inertia, so it wants to stay put. And that means it slides inside the tube and rubs up against those tiny hairs. The hairs can sense this friction and send that signal to your brain, who then does some crazy math that turns that back into a rotation. This is super useful on Earth because it lets you tilt your head without losing your sense of direction. Unfortunately, when you're spinning, the system is doing more harm than good. When you first start spinning, your vestibular system will pick that up and detect the rotation. But over time, the friction between the fluid and the hairs will slow it down until it stabilizes, and then you'll no longer be able to detect that you're rotating. That is, until you tilt your head. Because when you move your head, the axis that has stabilized may no longer be rotating, and another axis will suddenly detect this rotation that you forgot about. And all of that's in addition to the actual rotation you were expecting to feel. So a simple tilt of your head looking down at your feet will now feel like you are moving in all three axes and tumbling, which is not great for people with sensitive stomachs. And after a long enough time, it can make even the least susceptible people motion sick. But there is hope. In a previous video, I mentioned a researcher who has been studying the cross-couple illusion. By having subjects repeatedly tilt their heads back and forth while they were spinning, he was able to verify that the baseline for the cross-couple illusion starts at about 2 RPM. This corresponds to those kilometer-wide spaceships I was talking about. But he also found that if you keep bringing the same people in for the same 30 minute experiment over a couple of weeks, you can steadily increase the rate of rotation. 
In his paper, he was able to get people over 17 RPM without noticing the cross-couple illusion. And this is, again, 30 minutes a day for only two weeks. That's not a really extreme training regimen. That takes the size of our centrifuge from an unachievable kilometer long spaceship to something like 10 meters. That is so much more realistic for today's technology and mass limitations. But a lot of people have correctly pointed out that you can only do so much testing on Earth. Sure, having a subject laid down may replicate the bone loss and the muscle loss, but it's missing a key factor, which is the motion sickness the astronauts experience in zero G, also known as space sickness. Because you're still on Earth, you're never getting the same disorientation, so we can't properly test whether artificial gravity will cause worse or less worse motion sickness in zero g. You can't eliminate the Earth's influence without going to orbit. So that's exactly what this researcher is doing. Polaris Dawn is a private space mission being carried out by SpaceX. They will be launching two private astronauts and two SpaceX engineers into orbit for five days. They're going to be flying higher than anyone has flown since the 70s back in the Apollo program. They're doing the first private EVA, but more importantly for us, they're doing a bunch of experiments on how the human body reacts to space. And that includes another experiment by the same researcher that's looking at the cross-couple illusion in zero G. Seriously, why is nobody reporting on this experiment? Now, I did try to reach out to the professor and see if I could get some more details on how they're gonna pull this experiment off. Unfortunately, I didn't get a response, but I do have a panel where him and the crew talk about the experiment at my alma mater. Their bones get weaker and they become more brittle. Their muscles get weaker. They have cardiovascular deconditioning. The final mission, and I'll just be very brief on this one, is related to potentially a solution. Um, maybe the best way to do that is on a centrifuge uh, spinning around. But if you want to make that centrifuge small enough to actually be able to launch into space, you got to spin really fast. If you spin really fast and you move your head around, you get this really provocative illusion called the Coriolis cross couple illusion. We and other people have studied that on the ground, but we need to study this uh, in microgravity, which we have a really unique opportunity to do so on this mission. You guys are going to be flipping each other heads over heels and hopefully not hitting heads on anything. I know you practiced that a bit in parabolic flight. You guys want to elaborate upon that experience? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Our wonderful team at SpaceX created this simulated space in our parabolic flight out of PVC pipes to basically simulate that, that three-dimensional available volume. Very rapidly, we realized that all three of us couldn't control our bodies at all. And so all three of us start drifting in three different directions and the PVC pipe starts to, to explode in a very slow matrix-like moment. But we were able to visualize what that environment looked like. So then on subsequent parabolas, we were able to actually achieve the right rotation rate and we're able to control the spinner sufficiently to get confident that we can actually have the right space and the right success for your experiment in flight. Now, obviously, they aren't actually building and flying a centrifuge inside the Dragon. In fact, in one of the articles, the professor explicitly said that he is flying zero hardware on this mission. It's just a procedure and the astronauts. But I hope all of you understand why I'm still so excited for this experiment. Despite having a space station, which has been continuously inhabited for over 20 years, we have done almost no research on artificial gravity. So this study that's tackling one of the biggest outstanding questions about artificial gravity head on with zero hardware for dirt cheap all you need is some time from the astronaut's schedule this is incredibly exciting also yes i know in the video his head is at the center of rotation so it wouldn't feel like acceleration that is a control for a different experiment that experiment was looking at interocular pressure meaning the pressure inside of your eyeballs and in that experiment they compared the pressure standing obviously to laying down to laying down and spinning, but no artificial gravity on your head at least. And then they extended the arm so its head was no longer at the center of rotation and measured the pressure again. And you can compare all of those and see what are the effects of laying down, what are the effects of spinning without AG, and then what is artificial gravity itself adding. So yes, I know this video where he did this demo for the film crew or whoever came through from the university, that's not the actual setup for an artificial gravity centrifuge. You would want it to be wider than that. I know this. He knows this. You, you don't need to keep commenting about it. But I digress. We were talking about uh, motion sickness. Once we have a better understanding of motion sickness in space specifically, we have a much better idea of what designs we can even use 
to test and create artificial gravity. Does space sickness make astronauts more sensitive to rotation or does their acclimation to zero G help them overcome the limitations of their vestibular system? These are very basic questions that will have huge implications on what artificial gravity looks like, but right now we have no answer. So yes, I am beyond excited for this experiment to shine some light on this topic, and I'm sure you are too. I'm gonna to be keeping an eye out for any information I can until the launch in July, and if you wanna find out as soon as we have some actual data from this experiment, please subscribe and turn on notifications. There's also a lot of other great aerospace content on this channel, including a few videos about artificial gravity, so go ahead, check those out. I'm Gon Hathi, and I'll see you in another video. We don't even know if these work. How does he have gravity on his eyeballs? I don't understand. And it turned out to be a staggering 